Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is the Tech Educator Podcast. We are live every single Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We have a live audience, of course, every single Tuesday over on TeacherCast.tv. And thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We're going to be talking all about the brand new features that Google Apps has recently released. Uh, last week, they had a huge announcement over some of the new features in Google slides and we're here today with our cohort of guest hosts going to talk all about the different features but more importantly how they can be used in your classroom and we're going to be breaking them down one by one we've got some great demos coming on but first josh how are you today josh is doing just fine just got back last night from a short little weekend trip out to the northwest and how was everything i saw you out in seattle yeah, it was great. We had a, a great little conference at a school out there. I got to go last year as well. Uh, and um, it was awesome. A lot of good learning, a lot of good collaborating and networking with the teachers out there. They seemed genuinely excited and interested in the things that we were discussing. Um, so I'm excited that uh, that some great things are happening out there in, in Washington and glad I could be a small part of that. That is pretty awesome. Glad that you guys are doing well. Glad that you get. Hey, how did your team do this week, Josh? Uh, well, as I was trying to prepare for our closing, I, I saw they frantically came back down 14 and then decided that um, their defense just still didn't want to try. So oh. things happen. In the same same weekend, the uh, Brewers were officially eliminated officially eliminated from the playoffs when they blew a 6 nothing lead on Saturday, which was a pretty good microcosm of the season. But, so. did, but did they blow it in the ninth inning? That's the important part. Uh, well, the bottom of the eighth, which is the same thing when you're on the road. Sam, you're laughing right now. How are you today? I am dandy. Good. And how are the? Uh, how's everything out there in your makerspace? Really great. We've uh, got the 3D printer in the space. I got the fifth graders all working in Tinkercad today. We've got some some pretty exciting stuff going on. And today I put a wizard in a drill press. That is. Uh, I don't know what that means. Tell us a little bit about that, actually, really quickly. I. Uh, Got a toy marionette wizard, and it arrived broken. Its jaw hinge wasn't working, and I solved the problem by drilling out the old pins in the drill press. That is pretty cool. And with that being said, that gave me a chance to sneeze. Today, we're going to be talking all about the great things in Google Slides. Um, you know, in a few weeks, I'm going to be doing some great presentations at school, all designed around how to use Google Slides. I had a chance on Monday to share some of these features with our math, science, and business departments. And I got to tell you, it's hard to make teachers in math applaud something that has to be done in Google. But I showed them some of these neat features and they, they kind of liked it. How, how do you guys feel? Have you guys had a chance to play with some of these new features yet, Josh? Uh, a little bit. I've, I poked around somewhat. Being gone all weekend, my tinker time was quite limited on on the new features. I, I, I read over the blog post and was interested by a couple things. Uh, first of all, I think the skipping slides yes. uh, has been something that I've heard from teachers in the past, so I know that's going to be a thing uh, that they're really going to like. Um, I also think that the um, diagrams are important just because we do a lot of mind mapping type activities in the intermediate middle school level. Um, so those are going to be a thing that if that's easier, if there's a better tool for that within slides. Um, I haven't checked it out yet, like I said, but I believe that um, that's going to be something. And then, of course, once you open up the add-on store, uh, that opens up so many possibilities. I, I mean, I couldn't live without add-ons right now in my current environment when it comes to Sheets. Uh, so I can only imagine as that environment grows in Google Slides, uh, there's just so some incredibly generous and creative people out there who are using their skills to, to create some really awesome things. So I'm looking forward uh, really to the future of what the the app script and add-ons are going to enable with slides moving forward. And I think there's going to be some really awesome stuff there. Well, let's take a look at some of these add-ons that Josh was talking about here. The first one that I want to share with you guys is this new feature of skipping slides. And I think that goes well with another new feature of grid slides. So here we are in the brand new Google Slides. And as you can see, there's a few things that are brand new all of a sudden. The first is this brand new and gorgeous 
um, display of themes. Uh, this isn't something new that happened yesterday or last week, but there are a lot of amazing themes in here. And the coolest part about this is that you can actually choose which slides and, and, and themes are in here. You can actually have more than one theme in a presentation. So that's kind of neat. Let's see if we can switch a theme here. I'll go over to this one here. It's called Momentum. And I'm going to add a few slides. Here's a, a brown one. Here is a few different uh, types out here. So I have four slides here. And this is the one of the new features. We have film strip view, and we also have grid view. And we'll see here that if we hit the, the grid view, we now have this three by three or sometimes three by four, depending on your resolution um, grid. Uh, let me see here if I can take off the themes. All right, so here we are in our grid view. And first of all, in our grid view, we can always take these slides and we can move them around. We can maneuver them back and forth. But let's say that this slide number three here, we don't want to have in our presentation. I can always right click on this and then click on skip slide. And you'll notice, boom, we don't have that in our presentation deck when we hit present anymore. That is really cool. Now, obviously, guys, we have that feature in Keynote and in, and in PowerPoint. But, but Sam, okay. where can Good. we use that? Like, why is it important to have slides that are hidden that we might not want? Well, I um, I don't build brand new slide decks every time I give a talk, right? But so, I might have a couple different versions of one slide or something like that. It makes it easy to take an existing deck and customize it. So, for example, if I'm running classes out of slide deck, I might in period one figure out that there's a couple slides that I'm better off skipping when I do period two, or maybe I've built a whole slide deck and I make a period one assignment slide, a period two assignment slide, a period three assignment slide. Yep. And I just hide the irrelevant slides for each class. I think that's a great idea. I also recommend this. Let's say Sam, you're teaching an honors and a CP class. Maybe one group has more slides. Or maybe you have more lectures for one. Or perhaps you're building, and I used to do this for my kids, I would build a teacher's slide deck where I would have just the bare bones lecture stuff that I'm going to talk about. And then I would have a student slide deck that has all the information so essentially they don't have to type things out. And so to be able to customize this for your kids, it's pretty cool. There's one more feature in here. I, I, I don't know if you had a chance to play with this, but it, it is absolutely four C's. It is collaborative. It's creative. And it allows people, Sam, like, like us as, as presenters to mm -hmm. really rethink. And Josh, I don't know if, you've, if you had a chance to rethink how you're going to use this, but let's say that we have this slide deck here, and I want to say use this slide and this slide in another presentation. So I'm going to simply hit Control or Command C. I'm going to come over here to this new presentation and I'm going to hit Command or Control V and now I have these slides. You'll notice here that I have a brand new menu called Link Options and I can either link these slides or I can do not link. And if I don't link, they're just like it used to be. Two separate slides. But if I link these slides, you'll notice that up here I have this little link button. And so what can happen is let's go back to slide one. So let's say this was your contact information and you linked all of your contact information slides to each other when you changed positions or branding or whatever that would auto populate to all of the linked slides. Yes, I actually never thought of it for the for the contact information. But yes, that is absolutely true. If you have a new position or a new headshot or a new something like that, right? I, I lose my job all the time. So I think about things like that, Jeff. So <laughs> I am going to just doctor this one slide up. You can see here. Here's a nice picture of a puppy. So I'm going to come over here. Puppy? And because oh. these slides are linked up, I'm going to click on this slide. Uh, let's click on this slide, in fact. And over here, I can say update. And when I update, boom, there is the picture of that puppy. Now, Sam was mentioning this is a great feature for, for contact information. But let's say that Sam and I are, are teaching the same course. But he wants to have different slides on his intro and different slides maybe on his outro. But we have the same core slides because we're both teaching maybe the same science lab or we're teaching the same something else, right? We can share those lab slides. 
And so that way we can have two completely different decks, but we have information that we share with each other. Somebody like Josh and I, who are in, in all these different buildings, but maybe we share some information with our outside presentations. Maybe we have a set of, uh, of slides of how to make Google Slides. But maybe the first couple slides say our school district, and maybe the second couple slides say something completely different. It's really cool to be able to have these different slide deck options so that way you can create maybe one for each building. You can customize a slide deck for every building that you're in. So there's a lot of neat things that you can do here, I think, with these with this feature. Josh, how do you see yourself using this idea of custom slide decks? Because I got to tell you, I'm tired of creating a master slide deck, and then a few weeks later, I go to an ed camp, and I have to copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, and then... Maybe I go to ISTE and I want to use the same slides. Here, I can just, I can, I can link everything and it all gets updated. Yeah, that's, that's kind of neat. I guess when I think about that, I would say, uh, when your team teacher example is probably the best one, uh, in that you know we have you know six teachers who are going to be covering the same content, and that there's probably some things that are non-negotiable like these definitely need to be a part of your lesson. And and that's where I see this being really useful in that uh, they can collaborate and, and work on those things that um, are going to connect all the lessons, but then each person's slideshow can have a few extra things that they, they want to focus on a little bit more. Maybe it's how they're going to um, assess the content or what activity they're going to have the students do that might differ from, from the other classes. And so they can have... Uh, you know, six different slideshows, but have that same content. They don't have to wait till it's finished to copy over or have two different slideshows. Um, I can see that being useful. Peggy just asked a great question about ownership. So if I'm down the line in that group of teachers and the original teacher who created it deletes the slide deck, what happens to the linked slides? I don't... No, I would assume that the system is built in so that way they just become unlinked. That's right, what I would hope it would be. Because remember, you can you also have the option of of updating it or not updating it too. Jeff, right? So it's not going. Share that original slideshow with me that you that you linked the slides from, and make me the owner, and I will delete it, and we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see here. If I go into Josh. Okay, so I'm going to actually be sharing this from the second slide deck that I had uh, because I've already replaced the first. Actually, you know what? That answers the question right there. So let's, sorry for people who are in the car watching this. Here I have the original slide deck. You can see that I've already deleted these slides. And here I have slide deck number two. Well, obviously, if I go to update, it says this slide has been deleted from the source document. So Okay, but you still have it. I still have it. The slide has not changed. It just says you can no longer do anything. So I can now open the source document, which is a nice feature. I can unlink it or I can update it. But again, if I hit update, then nothing happens. It just tells me that the first version is broken. So at least, you know, it's not going into slide deck B, C, and D and deleting everything. That's, That's pretty cool. And, and, and Peggy, I didn't say I didn't know. I said I was going to find out soon. I'm being heckled here by my live audience member. So, um, so yeah, those are new features. Uh, let, let me show you guys one thing that I, I feel like it's been missing, or maybe I've missed it. Maybe you guys can tell me out there. But if I go into insert, way down here, I see this box now that says slide numbers. Have you guys checked this one out? So I can now put slide numbers on or off. And awesomely here, I can skip the title slide. So I have... Oh, that's great. Yeah. So now you can actually see what number slide you're on without yeah. having to... Yeah. That's pretty cool. So I like that feature. That's that, I don't even know if that one was new or how long that one's been there. But the one that I wanted to really show off here was this brand new feature here called Diagram. This opens up a brand new window over here of really nice looking diagrams and charts. And I can type in... This one here is called Hierarchy. It's got three levels, four levels. Let's do five levels. And I can click this and boom, there's a family tree. Like how easy is that? Let's do another slide. I'm just going to go over here to blank. 
and let's see. I want to come over here to circle and boom, done, simple. You know, maybe here's one with five steps, right? Boom. How easy is that now to make some really neat looking slides? I mean, if I came over here and I just grabbed them with a nice looking background, suddenly, boom, it just boom. works. Yeah. Boom. boom. So most notably, Google Slides has added a, a perceptible amount of boom. It does. And the neat thing here is I can click on this and these are really just shapes. So I can come over here to this shape and I can change the border color. I can make it really, really thick with the border wall. I mean, I can do a lot of things with this because essentially it's it's they're just pre-made shapes. It's pretty neat here. Yeah, I, we do diagrams a lot in the intermediate and middle schools and this what? boom. There's, see, there's another one. Yep, just a boom, you know, just uh, okay. uh, like hopefully somebody doesn't have the, PTSD the, or something when they listen to this. That would be bad. The, the Tech uh, Educator podcast has now turned into John Madden football. Yeah, the apparently podcast. Well, you know, that's that's as long as we can quantify the amount of improved boom. I think we're good. Yes, we can be all data driven. <laughs> but that's, that's not right. all right like like y you know w like we could do a, we could do a full two hour podcast on 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 all the booms here but so one of the booms i don't understand but yes. i love the sound of uh oh and ahead. i know that there are people on my campus who will be excited when i tell them that we could figure out how to do this is that your paperless ca campus yes my paperless campus um somebody trademark is that. the fact that you can now take app script and use it to take a bunch of Google photos and auto create a slideshow. And they have a nice piece of app script out there already, which designates the source as well as the target and then auto centers the photos on the page. So once you run this piece of script, it grabs the photos you designate, it calculates their size in relation to the slide size and auto centers them. So we have a, a monitor near the front office that's always showing, you know, some photos, but it's a very curated slideshow and it doesn't get refreshed very often. Hmm. And mainly that's because it's challenging to keep that looking good. But if we were able to just set the background color to a slide deck and designate the pictures and they would drop them in, you know, all we would be doing would be changing what, you know, the photo source. So that could be changed a lot more often. Would it make more of a difference for you guys if somebody was sitting there looking at the screen going, boom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what we want, Jeff, is we want the computer to do all the work so that everyone who looks at the screen <laughs> goes boom. Well, there is one more feature here that I want to talk about. And by the way, we have a really, really nice live audience tonight. I want to thank Peggy and Josh and, and Joe and, and, and dozens of others. we got a big live audience out here on Facebook and Periscope tonight watching. Um, one more thing here. And Josh, maybe you can help us out here, but... Many people right now are looking at making graphics and we're always looking for where do we find great stock images and stock is really just another term for free. And so I want to make sure that people out there know about this brand new thing. Let me see if I can turn this over here. Um, boom. There we go. So we have a brand new set here of add ons. And uh, I've noticed that since this launched last week, there's even more add-ons. So I'm going to click over here to add-ons. I'm going to sit, click on get add-ons. And we've got four here. This is pretty cool. We can we have Pear Deck all, already built in. Pear Deck here. We have uh, Balsamic Wireframes, which is kind of cool. I haven't had a chance to play with that, but it says Wireframes allows you to create, edit, and share sketch quality wireframes. Um, One and a half stars. Yeah, the Noun Project is pretty cool. If you guys have never checked out the Noun Project, it has all these really cool free icons. But the big one that I think is all these Adobe stock images. So really neat stuff. Let me see what I can do here. Oh, and we also got these down here. Lucid Chart, Slide Joe, Toolbox. Joe's asking if add-ons can be disabled by a Google admin in the district. I would assume they could. I don't think so, Josh. No? Mm, I, I think that there's some... There's definitely something that can be done. I, I think that 
they can designate add-ons to be installed. And I think that also they can limit the add-ons. Uh, I'm not 100% though. I will double back on that. Okay. Um, and I would love to do a show sometime on just all these different add-ons. I mean, there's only eight right now. And and you could see like there was only four last week. So there's a lot of things that are going to be happening here, which is really, really cool. Um but check out these different ways of, of bringing in stock photos and all these different things. It really, really neat updates. I mean, are these things that were missing in Google Slides? Yes. Are some of these no-brainer obvious ones that uh, are already in Keynote and PowerPoint? Absolutely. Uh, do we have a list of needs that uh, we would love to have in here? Yes. Um but I want to show off one more, and, and this is not a new feature, but every time I talk to teachers about it, they just have never seen this one here, and that is the ability to use Google Slides as a video editor. Sam, I know you do a lot of work with your with your video. Have you Say ever... Say what now? I'm sorry. What now? Say what now? What now? Google what now? Slides as a video editor. Have you what ever now? thought boom. of now... Okay, now, let's get back to boom. Here's the deal. But... I have a happen? I have a social studies teacher who last year I worked with him and we he wanted to make a commercial. He wanted the kids to edit, you know, to find video and then edit video and they want like make a four or five minute video. And he spent a lot of time learning a popular online video editing platform. And what ends up happening is you're spending more class time saying things like, why don't you go learn iMovie and you go learn Wii Video and you go learn Final Cut and you go learn... And you're spending more time teaching editing skills than you are teaching the content. But all he was really looking for was scene, 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 scene. But you can do that. You can totally use Google Slides as a video editor. So um, let me see what we got here. If I come over now, here... I use Google Slides a lot to help students prompt and plan videos. I use it as a, um, if you will, uh, what's that thing? Uh, storyboard creator. Yeah. Um, is that what you're talking about? No. Or are you talking about like no. real video editing? I'm talking about real-time video editing here. So let's just assume, and let's see, let me pop myself back into here. So here I am with my blank slide presentation, and... Just just go with this for a second, Sam, right? Just just go with this. So I'm going to insert a image and let's come back over here to Rover. I'm just going to use this here and perhaps I'm going to change the background of this. Let's see. Here we go. Background and I'll make this a dark background. There we go. Wonderful. And so I'm going to add a blank slide and I'm going to come over here to insert video. And I'm just going to find a video on my Google Drive. I hope something is good. All right. Here's a video that I took of our school. And, and I do want to say I'm extremely proud of our school district because we just received a uh, Blue Ribbon Award from, uh, from the, the Secretary of Education herself, which was really, really cool. That, was, that happened last week. We were, we're, a, we're a Blue Ribbon school. So, Congratulations. Yes. Really, really proud of that. Now, let's do another another slide and another video. Now, I didn't do anything else to this videos yet, but I'm going to pull this video over here and I'm going to pull, let's see, another blank slide. I'm going to pull this video over here. So I just, I'm just going to do three, three quick videos, right? Not, nothing big here, just three quick videos. Now, this particular video here, I'm going to click on and go over to video options. And I'm going to notice over here in the video options, this is a 15 minute long video. I don't want that. Okay. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I want to say start at zero, zero, and I want this to end at zero, zero dot, dot 47 seconds. Right. And let's say that I want to autoplay that. In fact, you know what? Let's just make it easier. I'm going to go zero four. That way we don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing. All right. So this is going to automatically start and it's going to go four seconds. And you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to look at this again and I'm going to say, I want this to start at nine seconds and I want this to go to 12 seconds. 
And so now you can see how I've just now edited these two slides together to be a video. It's not going to be continuous. This isn't Final Cut. But I don't want to focus my kids on editing. I want my kids to focus on the content. And then over here, and then over here. So let's say that I've edited out all these four videos, so that way they're kind of all together. And I'll just click on this to say autoplay. And I'll click on this one here to say autoplay too. So you, you kind of get the idea where I'm building. And then the next step here is just to simply go select all, and then come over here into transitions. And I want to fade the transitions and apply it to all. So Sam, do you see where I'm going with this? You, yeah, definitely. You, you like can, if you were if you were working with students and you wanted them to be, you know, essentially creating a video of small pieces of video, which is what I advocate. I actually talk a lot with my kids about creating narrated slideshows, and then this is the next step above that narrated slideshow, right? Yes. Because it gives the students an opportunity to compose short. And if you separate out the two tasks of the making words and the recording video, so they're not trying to walk and chew gum at the same time, the whole thing is more focused. So I like this a lot. Now, there's one more step that can go on top of this, which is to use a, a Chrome extension called Screencastify, where you're actually then able to, as you said, Sam, record your voice over top of all of this stuff. And well, so that's really nice, because one of the things that um, I really enjoy doing with my students is that narrated slideshow. We're an all Apple environment, so we have tools like iMovie with voiceover narration. Yeah. Um, and when we drop photos into that, it autofills. So if we, for example, Jeff, now you've got me thinking, uh -oh. if you created a slide deck automatically from a bunch of photos, you could then use Screencastify to narrate the slideshow. Yes. Yes, nice. I mean, and it and it really just opens up the idea and the possibilities here. Um, at the end of the month, I'm going to be working with my kindergarten through K K one teachers on creative ways of using slides, and you know, it, it's just so easy, right? Like most most of us already have this stuff put together, right? We already have right. these decks. So why not just take the current content and maybe you export it as a image and or a PowerPoint and you upload it into something like a smart notebook software or I, maybe you I turn mean, this I've into. I've always enjoyed the versatility of Google Slides. You know, we've been making animations in Google Slides yep. for years now. Yeah. Um, and it seems like with this upgrade, they're, they've really worked to bring Google Slides into that app script enabled world. The advent of add-ons, I mean, I think we're going to see a lot of stuff show up in add-ons now that we've got that. I'm yeah. hoping that we can see a little more savvy collaboration tools come into Google Slides, but we'll see. Well, again, we're, when we're talking about the communication tools and you said more, well, there's nothing that says that we can't do that same slide deck and then you're going to copy that into yours because you're, you're in a completely different school district. Right. And then I can update it on my side and boom, it's there it was again. It's going to be right. updated on your side. Or why don't you share with me again? If you if you're going to share with me your directions for how to use dot and dash, mm -hmm. I have a couple options. I can take your same exact slide deck or I can make a copy of your slide deck. But what happens then if right. tomorrow you want to update that. Well, I've now got that. Now, the one thing that doesn't work is let's say that I'm copying four of your slides and somewhere in the middle of everything over the next four months, you make a fifth slide. Mm -hmm. Now we have an issue. So you've, you've still got to stay friends with people, right? You got to maintain your relationships. Always. Well, only with only with Wonder Workshops. There, okay. So that way, you know, when the when the things update, right? Now, right. well, now yeah. this here is the important part here. Now, we have about 25 people watching on Periscope right now, and we have a, a world of people um, watching over on TeacherCast.tv. I'm going to put this over here on, on a single shot here because I, I have a question for the audience out there, the TeacherCast nation, if you will. 
Tomorrow is October 4th, and it's Sam's birthday. What you, we would love to have you do right now is go onto Twitter and use the hashtag Sam's birthday and wish him a happy birthday to Sam Patui. If you guys could do that right now, that would be awesome. Now, let's say that you're driving in your car. Stop your car. Pull over. I'll give you a second. And get out your phone. And then please wish at Sam Patui a happy birthday. And if you want to do hashtag boom, go for it. And you know why? Because Sam right now looks like this. Sam, happy birthday. Thanks, Jeff. You're a sweetheart. Absolutely. And so there's a lot of things here, as we can see here, that we can do here on on um, what we're talking about Google Slides, and and, and really, I, I I agree with what Josh was saying. This is just the this is the iceberg. Josh, now earlier we had talked about a way of using apps scripts, which is something I know absolutely nothing about. See the pun in there? Did you have a chance to check out what that was about, or could you briefly explain what that was all about? Sure. Uh, if you're familiar at all with um, any of the other Google tools, every single one of them. Uh, except for like Google Drawing, has a section under tools called Script Editor. And you can go in there and you can write uh, very similar to JavaScript code uh, to do some basic things within those programs. So for instance, in Sheets, you can set up a script that will auto-sort your columns every time you get new data. So it could be connected to a Google Form. And then every time a new entry comes in, it automatically sorts that for you. That's the kind of stuff that you can do with AppScript. And, and it all depends on what services you can connect to. Um, but then the other part of this, too, is that there's these things called APIs out there that everybody has that allows the, the programs to talk to each other. So when you're looking at these super awesome add-ons, especially the ones that are in slides now, uh, those are, are much more complex and, and to the level that uses AppScript, but goes a little beyond that. Uh, but um, as far as what specific tools are within the slides, uh, slide script, um, I have to imagine that anything that you can do uh, within the slides editor, so anything from inserting images to shapes uh, to text to creating new slides, all of those things can be done within the AppScript. And then using such things like loops and um, different logic, you can really automate some things in there as well. Um, and just this is kind of unrelated, but sort of related to the whole app script thing in slides now. Um, I just noticed that our old friend Autocrat, which is one of my favorite add ons for Sheets, um, now allows you to use Google Slides as something you can generate a mail merge with, which I think is awesome. Wow. That is pretty cool um what i would love to learn and this is a completely different topic is what do you do when autocrat sends you an email every day saying it broke that's what i'm having right now with my stuff but we can talk about all that stuff off canvas look <laughs> it is um coming up to the end of this show here and like i said we've had a we've had a good size audience don't forget we're here every single week now next week um october 10th we have a pretty cool um Pretty cool show lined up. We are going to be doing a show based around some really important conversations here over the last couple uh, weeks here. Um, is your school a Google school? Is your school a Microsoft school? Is your school an Apple school? And we are going to have some friends on from some of these major companies to basically ask the question, what will it take to make your school switch? And many people think it's a new superintendent walks in and just says, eh, we're Google now, we're going to be Microsoft. But it's not that easy. And we have a superintendent coming on um, from a, a great school in the Midwest. And, and, and we're going to talk to him and ask, what would it take you to completely change the philosophy that you've brought into your school district and make you switch from a Google school to a Microsoft school? And we're going to bring on a Microsoft school and we're going to say, what will it take? And what are those conversations that, that, that has to happen in order for that to be? Sam and, 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 and Josh, have you guys ever been a part of these discussions of, of moving a school district from a major platform such as a Google, a Microsoft, an Apple, or in Sam's case, a Linux? Right. I, I have been a proud member of several different tech committees and um, 
that is always an exciting process, but there's a lot of, you know, weighing the needs of all the different stakeholders. And then there's something like, you know, money reading Gary Steiger's recent piece about Chromebooks out loud to the whole staff and making them think about it. These are the discussions that we're going to have. We also have two, uh, two special guests. I can't tell you who yet. But uh, it, 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 trust me, you're going to want to come up for this show. So that's going to be next week, October the 10th. We also have a great show coming up. I can't remember the Tuesday. It's October the 24th. 20, I think it's Tuesday the 24th. Um, we have our friend Jared DeCamp coming on along with our friend Richard Snyder. They are, um, uh, they are coming on to talk about a, a new conference that happened last year. Uh, it's an online conference on Microsoft OneNote. That conference is going to be happening again at the early November, and we're going to be talking about all the great things that Microsoft OneNote can do. So we're going to have a good time for that. So, um, guys, great show tonight. Lots of new features in Google Slides. I'm certainly interested. And now that I know that there's some new features that I didn't even know about, I'm looking forward to that. So check that stuff out. Over on TeacherCast, we recently put out some new uh, articles. Sam, you put out a recent article on TeacherCast about uh, your birthday, didn't you? Right. It was just a silly little yes, it was. blog blog <laughs> post about the fact that it's my birthday month. But really, there's a lot of stuff going on. And I find that I my blog draft file gets big with these really ambitious blog posts and it's good sometimes just to put out a similar one. We recently had our friends from Storyboard That put out a post, a guest post on, on TeacherCast about some of the new features over on there. So if you're checking out Storyboard That, um, lots of great things. We put a lot of pictures and some diagrams on there, different ways that you can be using Storyboard That in the classroom. Um, other neat things here, we have our Meet Edison robots. We put out our, our brand new TeacherCast Best in Class post. So you can check that stuff out there. And uh, lots of great things. We recently started season two of the Jersey Educator podcast, the show that I do with the uh, New Jersey Educators Association. And coming back on popular demand, thankfully, is our season two of the Microsoft Innovative Educator podcast. So we're going to be doing a lot more stuff with our friends over at Microsoft Education. And so want to th say thank you to everybody out there who is watching us live on TeacherCast.tv. I'm sure many of them are in our living room right now. But uh, Josh, where can we find you on your uh, Twitters and stuff? Uh, so you can find me out at Mr. G Fact of the Day on Twitter. Uh, currently, you will find tweets from our recent Apps Event Summit out in Washington that I got to be a part of. And uh, coming soon, uh, some insight into what it's like to try and take uh, sixth graders through projects using Soundtrap. Uh, so, nice. Um, I'm intrigued at what that's going to look like. Uh, through the end of the year, there's going to be 300 kids who get to do a project using that, whether it's making a song, a uh, mix, uh, radio play, something. Um, I'm excited. We just purchased a bunch of uh, blue snowball microphones and a couple classroom subscriptions worth of Soundtrap. And that's going to be our big sixth grade makerspace project this year that every kid will be able to do in sixth grade. Uh, fifth grade, because they're new this year, we'll get to do stop motion uh, like all the kids got to do last year. Um, so I'm really excited to see where they go this year. Last year was an absolute blast with that. Very, very cool. Sam, where can we find some of the great things that you're doing? Me and all of my stuff is at mypaperlessclassroom.com. Waiting for you to come by and check us out, please. And of course, as we wrap up this show, Sam, I want to remind everybody to sign up for our newsletter and our mailing list. Uh, I want to share with everybody out there who's watching the brand new uh, TeacherCast Best in Class EPUB, where we're going to be showcasing all the great things that we've been talking about here with all of our um, amazing robots. Let me show you guys. the. F you guys can be the first people to look at this. And so here's what it's going to look like here. Uh, this particular chapter deals with all of our robotics and our Edison robot talks a little bit about what it is, has all the links. Once we officially launch this, you got to get it. And here's, of course, our chapter on Go Pi Go. Um, great stuff. Great robots. We're, we're, we're going to be finishing this off hopefully this week and getting it out sometime before New Year's. Isn't that right, Sam? Yes. Oh, New Year's. Come on. Well, well we just had a New Year's, so I was trying to date myself. Right. That's true. 
There's, of course, several great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this and all of the shows in the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. Of course, we love it when you find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave us a voice message over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at TeacherCast.net. And, of course, you can subscribe to this and all of our shows over on TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. On behalf of everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.